So when we shot that scene, uh, I specifically, I waited for that scene for so long because I wrote in the very beginning before we even shot the movie, the reaction of each individual bastard son in this scene is, is the telling point of their character and how they exist. Wow. So if you look at that scene, every single character reacts differently. If I told you our story, would you believe me? If I told you what we're about to do, would you judge me? If you knew what I knew, would you stop me? We're worried about you, Vincent. Sorry to hear about your dad. I think I know who did this. I feel if I tell you, you'll lose control. One day at a time, baby. You guys have any idea who? I hear all the boys are getting back together. So you're telling me you just sat with Rome and talked? Rome saw his chance and he made his move. I know it was him. So you're not wasting no more time, huh? There's no time to waste. for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Hello, Tom Levecki here, back in the studio today, a day before my birthday, and this will be released in 2024. Wow, that scares me. <laughs> I'm here with Kevin, and how do you say your name? Interdonato? That's it, man. Interdonato. Italians always say it, right? Yeah, so Kevin Interdonato. Now, this is a in somewhat interesting story, um, but let's just jump right in. Uh, Kevin has launched an awesome gangster movie, a gangster film, that I had the uh, pleasure of uh, seeing the obviously premiere, one of the premieres that he had here in New Jersey. I fell in love with the movie. I said, I need to get you in the studio. We got to get together. He's busy. He was gracious to come in. Kevin, welcome to the New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you, man. I'm great, man. Thank you very much for that. And thanks for coming to the uh the premiere, man, because I hit you up cold, you know, I reached yeah. out to you, I was hoping I've been following your page for a long time, and I was like, I wonder if you would head over there, so thanks for coming. I was I was happy to. Now, it was on a Sunday, so there was, okay, so first- A rainy Sunday. A rainy Sunday. Yeah. So first there was, we got invited to Fiddler on the Roof at Paper Mill Playhouse, and I, like, I'm like, I love, if I wasn't rich, I yeah. love uh, Fiddler on the Roof. So- what happened was we, my mother in law is great. We don't like to, we don't ideally like to leave our kid with any strangers. So we don't get babysitters. We deal with my mother in law. She's awesome. Shout out to Nancy. And what happened uh, there was Nancy were like, hey, is Nancy available? We weren't sure. So we're like, all right, uh, we couldn't go to Fiddler on the Roof. So we're like, my, I sent my sister. She went, she covered it, um, did a great review on it. It's going to be live. But I'm like, I told, I told my wife, I'm like, I'm that kind of last minute guy too. Like, I, I told her, like, last minute, I'm like, hey, we got this film to go to. She's like, what is that? I'm like, some Italian dude is in a film, looks pretty dope. <laughs> and she's like, Ecuadorian as fuck. She's like, I could care less. I'm like, but I do. I swear it's good. So we got there a little late, and I missed the first five minutes. So I might ask to see. Oh. I know, I know, I know, I know. So I have to, that's why I was, I, like, I was like, I was. You asked me a lot of questions. I was uh, stalking you the next day. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's jump right in. So it's a bas bastard son. The Bastard Sons, yeah. Now, but it's different than the traditional Jersey gangster film. So why don't you kind of set up the premise of the story? Because it's, 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 Vinny's an amazing character, and it's an amazing, amazing movie. Thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, I've done my share of film, and, and um, I never directed anything before. I wrote this with my friend and um, from his story, so I wrote the screenplay. And it came time to look for a director, and I was like, I just don't know if I can give this. Mm -hmm. I was so... I was so dialed into it, so connected to it. Yeah. I knew I was going to play the role, but I also produced it. And I said, I think I got to direct it. So I kind of went into a blind. I didn't know what to do, but I, I've been fortunate to play a lot of uh, leads. And with that is a, uh, is a training of how to tell a story, you know, an arc. 
So I just kind of took what I know as an actor and applied it to being a director, and I'm pretty obsessed, it's a blessing and a curse, uh, with my work, and um, it, it it served to be it served to help me throughout the process all the way to the end because it's like a you know two year process, man, just the making of it. So it's an endurance game. But that's pretty ballsy to self direct. Yeah, it's was that was ballsy, that you yeah. know respectfully was that a control thing? Was it you know maybe financial? Like what what was the the kind of the 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 motivation behind self directing? It's part of that. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely part of it. You know, because I I was I put my finances up. It was my first time. I produced films and wrote yeah. films, but it was hard for me to ask somebody if they'd like to invest in me until I invested in myself. I I, I don't I don't like doing that. Because to me, it's a business. Every yeah. movie's an LLC. Correct. You know, the business hat, you know? Yeah. And I said, uh, if I'm going to go on this venture, I'm going to bet on myself first and then proof up with this and see yeah. if it works. It could have fell, man. You know, it could have fell flat. But I uh, had good people around me, and thank God it worked out. So I got pitched probably at least 10 films over the years. And I've also been around doctors who have worked in, in the pharmaceutical and the uh, aesthetic space. So I worked on a lot of doctors that um, got pitched, and I was in on the pitch, either like he'd advise them or was pitched as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I always kind of got weirded out because it was like, hey, we have the LLC, and then we have like the international rights, and you can get in on this, and you right. can buy in on that, and that kind of stuff. But you kept it simple. You just pretty much self-funded, and you got a, help, like, a little help from some of you. And by the way, thank you for your service, by the way. Oh, thanks. Um, I, I should have probably let him with that. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit, too. So you just pretty much self-funded and then just got a little help from some buddies, correct? Yeah, yeah. And I, I could have received more and I didn't. And that's what I was talking about like that before. We are talking about like a smart budget business model. Yeah. There was no need to take any more than I had. You know, a lot of people in this business, it's a business of dreamers, man. Yeah. Especially, especially filmmakers too, not yeah. just actors. And yeah. I stopped following my dreams a long time ago. I let it impassion me. Yeah. But you follow a dream, where's the goal, where's the end? It's just the other fucking rainbow, you know? Yeah. So um, I, I said, all right, if I'm going to do this right, I came up in a family construction business. I know how to line things up. Yeah. And, I, and I did. And uh, I just put the money in enough to make the film and everyone get paid. Yeah. Most people will take, take, take as much as they possibly Absolutely. can. Absolutely. Pack those pockets. It's a, it's a, um, you know? when, you, when, when you see somebody doing a cap raise on a film and you're like friends with that person, you could be a vendor... There, it is a little bit of a cash grab, yeah, yeah, to yeah. be honest. Sure. Hey, come to my place. Oh, you can rent it. Sure. Or, or, oh, I do marketing. Hey, give us 50 grand and we'll, no. we'll get you on top of the Amazon algorithm and all that kind of stuff. So there's a little level of cash grab. So, so you were kind of smart about it. Was that because you've seen people kind of got fucked before? Yeah. Or, okay, if you can kind of maybe yeah. you know, share your experiences there, what you've seen. Big time. I mean, almost every movie I've done, mo most movies, as an actor, they don't make money. You may break even, but not for nothing. Who wants to, who the fuck wants to work for three years and break even on it? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, there's got to be a, uh, there's a system in place that's been there for a long time, right? Hollywood's a business for a long yeah. time for a yeah. reason. Yeah. Independent filmmakers come into that and they're like, oh, I'm going to do what I want. Good luck, bro. Yeah. I've seen very successful businessmen come into the, the, the independent film game, Hollywood yeah. game, yeah. and go belly up. Yep. They think they could do what they want. So it's kind of like you got to follow a system of sorts. It's kind of like making a movie is kind of like painting in the numbers. Yeah. But you're as creative as possible within, within that. Within those numbers. Yeah. So you have to follow suit because there's a system there. So I just saw it. I saw the angles. I did the best I could with it. And uh, yeah, I didn't pad my pockets. I put it towards the movie. Those actors were wearing my jackets, my shirts, or my cars. I got the props. I cooked the food. Wow. Just this first one out. I said, I'm going to do it everything. Yeah do everything so I know for the next time and it worked it just worked so okay so the difference between kind of your movie because I, I all I saw was gangster and a jersey and movie and I'm like say less and Italian director so I'm like say, <laughs> say, say, say less um, so uh, I, I went and I had really high hopes and we can't get it to the, to the plot because it was uh, like deep into the plot because we don't give it away but you took a little bit of a different angle uh, on the crew than the traditional yeah. kind of Italian mafia angle. Yeah. What give us kind of like, which which on one end was very refreshing, 
but you do run some risk on that because mm -hmm. I, I this is terrible. I, like I don't know about anybody else, and I, I built this channel off of like kind of mob content. I'll watch some type of like crime thing, and if it's like the name doesn't end in a vowel, I turn it off. <laughs> like I'm just like I'm done. You know, I'm maybe bleeding, maybe bleeding the cartel. Drop your comments below if you're the same way. If it doesn't have a vowel, I don't watch. It just we're trained that way. Good yeah. marketing, I guess, by the mob PR. Or maybe yeah. bad because you don't want to, you know, too many people watching. But with that being said, though, you kind of took a risk there. So give me kind of that, the, give me the, the, the strategy as an artist and developing that arc and having different characters. And then also maybe, did you care about the business end as well? Give me kind of like how that meshed. Care about the business end. Me meaning, meaning, meaning like you, you kind of had non traditional characters which made it interesting from an artistic standpoint. Ah. But then if you're a guy like me and you see, and you, let's see you watch a trailer and you're like, oh, this is not a super hardcore guinea film. Let me not watch. But you're taking that risk. So give yeah. me kind of the artistic <laughs> angle and then maybe give me the marketing angle. Or if maybe you were cognizant of that. I don't know. It, it's funny. You kind of nailed it on the head. I, I personally have seen so many shitty gangster films. I mean, my, my, my level is fairly high now and I, yeah. I can't help but watch a movie and study it in different yeah. ways, you yeah. know? So, you know, you can't beat the classics. You can't, you can't reinvent the wheel. And who am I, first time director to come out the gate? Like, what am I think yeah. I'm, I'm, you know? Yeah. And the last thing I'll ever do is talk highly about myself because I'm not proven yet. Yeah. And I just don't do that anyway, that shit. Yeah. So, um, quite frankly, I got sick of it. I got sick of the bada bing bada boom. Yeah, I yeah. got sick of the poly walnuts. I got, yeah, yeah. I, I, to me, it, it's it's we're past that now. Yeah, Life yeah. has evolved, yeah. and that's a faction that almost nowadays, to a younger generation, looks caricature. Whereas at the time of when I did the Sopranos years ago, yeah. those are real dudes I grew up yeah, with. Yeah, but if yeah. some twenty year old kid or th you know thirty year old kid sees a guy like that now, yeah. they're laughing at. Him. Well, you you want to yeah. laugh? You want to laugh? I um. My next kind of endeavor for podcasting is your little man on the street. And I think if you kind of went to like under 30 and say, hey, do you know who John Gotti is? Or right, Tony right, Soprano, right. even Scarface. Well, Scarface kind of transcended because a lot of the hip hop culture. But mm. if you ask for John Gotti or Tony Soprano, I'd, I would say probably less than 50%. Yeah, probably, man. It's what just going that route. Yeah. It's unfortunate, too. The icons, yeah, you know? Yeah. But, you know, guys like us, we hold on to it and some other other people. Yeah. But just because I hold on to it personally, my number one job is to please the audience. Correct. So I had to think with that in mind and do what I could without sacrificing my integrity to, yeah. to meet it halfway. Yeah. So the idea of having the cast, how, how I did it, a mixed bag of brothers, bastard brothers. That's awesome. Uh, it's kind of how I grew up and lived, you know, um, in Jersey, in the yeah. military, it was like I was always around all different kinds of dudes. So the idea of of a mob family, why does it have to be associated with like mob? Like if you notice, I never used the word mob. That you was know, I know that's correct. Nothing like that. Yeah. It's just they're criminals, yeah. and they're brothers, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. And we happen to be in New Jersey, yeah. and I'll let the cards fall where they may. Correct. You I know, like that. and I know those actors. I only work with actors that I know. I don't audition anybody. Yeah. I think it's insulting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it's like it's like you know a friend that paints, and like, hey, can you come over and paint? And you like test. Let me test you out on this wall first. Let me see how yeah, good you know, it's like, dude. Come on. Yeah. You know? Like so. So number one is you know I um I uh, I'm a big proponent of if I know somebody in my network that does that service, I go to them first. Sure. Same here. And then number two, and and I'm not saying other communities. I'm not knocking anybody. But I feel like within the Italian American community, there's not enough of that. Because if you are a painter and you bid out for fifteen hundred bucks, see, this is where it's funny. So like, you'll bid out a job, and like the, your Italian paisan is fifteen hundred dollars more, and you don't go with him or her because of that. But then you want their kids to do well, yeah, right? Yeah. Hopefully, you're you're affording school okay yeah. for your children. So like, you know, I see the long game, and I think I think you know, don't get me wrong, you should always give everybody a chance. But what I'm just saying. Being an Italian American within the Italian American community, yeah. I do like to support our community because I think there's a lack thereof. But I like the fact that you employed your friends. I want to switch gears a little bit to, to, to Vinny, the um, the main character who you play, who you play, which is pretty dope. So I I'm always sensitive to kind of the father son narrative. My father was not around; he left when I was two. Kind of reemerged, but at, at best a part time dad from like six to twelve. But he was 
left us and I have a little bit of, you know, things towards that. So, so, but I do my best to be a great father. I'm, I'm trying my best. Um, I always say, I will never say I'm a great father because at that, I'll never get to that point. Cause I'm always trying to be better. Sure. Right. Sure. So totally different break the cycle. But so I'm real kind of, uh, cognizant and dialed in on father son relationships, especially with Italian Americans. Mm -hmm. And even though I missed the first part, which I won't get into, um, but you could see Vincent's father in him. Even though his father is not, you know, throughout the whole movie, I won't get into why. But my point being is, um, I just see his father in that. It, give me kind of like your thought process, and maybe I don't know if you thought of the father son dynamic, and maybe you have, but that really resonated with me personally. Wow, that's the beauty of this yeah. art, man. Yeah. You never know what someone's gonna latch onto or yeah. connect with. You know, yeah. there's, there's, um, very distinct and clear voiceover in the beginning of the film that foreshadows. Mm. And when you first hear it, you don't know, it's just talk. Foreshadow, correct. But yeah. I don't want to let you know about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it does foreshadow things yeah. and, and bookends the end. Um, but yeah, the, the dynamic, the dynamic was, was, uh, was everything to me. And as I was writing, the script was done. And as we're getting closer to production, things kept changing and changing. Interesting. I was just sitting on it and sitting on it so yeah. long and like i said it was the first time i directed so i i you know my 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 passion is is being an actor and yeah. it's it's the only way i could breathe until i started doing this and i'm like wow it's so creatively fulfilling so being able to just have have control of a story and all the idiosyncrasies and mm -hmm. colors in it goes far beyond just playing my role, getting hired as an actor, yeah. and then all right, see you later. Yeah. And then a year later, I'm in, the, I'm in the screening, and they're showing it, and I'm like, oh, fuck, this sucks. You know what yeah. I mean? It was cool. And the, the father with son relationship, not to be long-winded, sorry. Yeah. Um, fun. That was, I needed, I needed, I needed a, a base. Yeah. If that base wasn't set, because the father's yeah. barely yeah. in the movie. Yeah. We just talk about him. Talk about talk about the character of Rome a lot. He's, um, he's only in two yeah. scenes. Yeah, but you talk about it, you talk about it, you bring them up. But I learned after the years too what yeah. supporting characters do. So there was just ways of playing around with that. And the father's presence, this yeah. overbearing uh, presence in the film, even though he's not even on it, yeah. set the tone. And it's the difference of, you know, how these individual brothers, bastard brothers, actually feel about the man. Mm. You know, when we shot the scene where if I say this, will you just bleep it out? Uh, so when we shot that scene, uh, I specifically, I waited for that scene for so long because I wrote in the very beginning before we even shot the movie, the reaction of each individual bastard son in this scene is, is the telling point of their character and how they exist. Wow. So if you look at that scene, every single character reacts differently. Yeah, Do you remember? Sure about it, yeah. They're all unique. Yeah. One's angry, one's yeah. upset, yeah. one's infuriated, one's yeah. like, what's going on here? Yeah. You know, it, it's all different. And I, because I knew, I just had a gut feeling this movie was gonna catch and then we're gonna make a sequel. Yeah. And I needed that character trait yeah. to carry on to the sequel to justify wow. how they would be. Interesting. Yeah, it, so you were thinking ahead even, like obviously you wanted to kind of close that arc, but in the same token, those characters can develop beyond the movie or not. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> depending, depending how they how they nice to Kevin personally. Yeah. Right, right. So guys, right. be good, be good to him. So the guy who played Rome was Mikey in The Sopranos. Oh, he's great. I'll What's his name again? Yeah. Okay. How did you get him? He's a pretty, yeah, pretty big name. Friend, you know my boy Joe Cernio. He was yeah, yeah. I Dawson. like him. He looks so familiar to me. He's he a Jersey guy. Stuff. Yeah, he's from Asbury. He's got a big business uh, SEO business called Shoreline Media. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's won a lot of awards. He's a great dude. What? He's family man. Yeah. I uh. That's how I know him because I, I have a much smaller SEO company, but uh, uh, I'm like that dude looks familiar yeah. and he has better hair than me. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well he has hair. He's uh, got good hair, Joey. Very um, good. But yeah, I I grew up with Joey. You God know, bless. Boys. And um, you know, we lived together in Belmar. He's but he's, is he an actor? Yeah. He he was he killed the part. He's great, you know. And I know Joe's strong points as an actor. When I was writing, I I thought of him, you know, and all the other characters. And his character name is Dobson. Uh, is, is a, yeah, uh, you didn't have him play like the stereotypical Jersey Guinea guy. I didn't want to. Cool. Nah, Dobson is, uh, I took that name from a very good friend of mine 
very dear friend of mine, Peter Dobson, who's a longtime actor who's from New Jersey and he's been out in LA for a while and he was in big movies and and um yeah, so there's a lot of things. It is Switchy. My other friend Lou Mandalore, yeah, yeah. big fat Greek wedding. Yeah, 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 yeah. So his his nickname is Switchy in real life. So I just named a lot of guys some funny That's shit dope. and had fun with it. Uh, That's dope. So yeah, I had a lot of fun with it, even though it's pretty freaking heavy. Um, yeah. We still we still enjoyed ourselves. All right, so you had the dynamic of the crew. You guys obviously had the game plan within the movie. We're not gonna give too much away. Um, and then, so when you, okay, so you obviously had the plan, you wrote the, you wrote the script, um, you obviously administered the script, you know, you, how, how do you, and I, I know his wife is in, in acting, um, you know, I, I uh, my, my wife is very supportive, I, I really, I don't know when the last time she said no to any business opportunities, um, oh, the, by the way, I should announce this, this is a collaboration with New Jersey Digest. Um, I I uh, I uh, acquired Digest in nineteen. It was a, a fairly substantial investment at the time. Um, we we bought Digest before we bought our house, and she was pregnant. So imagine pregnant. We're looking for a house, and then we buy the house, and then the P word comes. The pan the pan P word. I don't want to say because I don't want to get demonetized or limit the limit the views. Um, so I was in a scary place and then with the pan, the P, um, so, so this SEO and your buddy, I'll tell you, the SEO is a long game. You work with somebody yeah. now, like he probably had a lot of cancellations or people kind of lower their mm -hmm. retainers or pause their retainers. And we, we lucked out on the SEO side. We, we actually were in the, you can never tell by looking at me, but we were very heavy in the plastic surgery space Great. and that actually increased during that time. Wow. People were off of work. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And people were um, were uh, wanting to get surgery because they could be out, be out, right? And people watching, yes, I should probably go to my own accounts. But again, another discussion. Um, like my favorite thing, I was with this prominent, prominent surgeon at one time, and I was you know doing a precept, which you kind of follow him around. Okay. And we were you know big Jersey plastic surgeon too. I'll tell you afterwards. Yeah. And we're there, and this lady came in, and respectfully, she was just. A very unattractive woman. I'm just, you know, because there's Fibonacci sequence, good time guy, yeah, Fibonacci yeah, yeah. sequence and, and uh, 3.14, whatever, and symmetry, right? So you're either kind of attractive or not mathematically. She was just a very unattractive woman. I'm not saying I'm, I, look, we get where I'm going. So we get out, we're like, what are you doing in that case? And he goes to me, he goes, you can't fix ugly. <laughs> Still resonates with me that day to today. So, so with that being said, I'm not sidetracking. With that being said, though, so because there's always the idea. And then there's the execution, yeah. right? So um, script written, you go to your wife, I mean, long-winded statement for question, is you go to your wife, hey, I need like real money. Like we're married, you have, you have a child. I need real money to throw at a film, which in a way was probably cathartic, kind of a Jersey-based film maybe you probably needed to do it or wanted to do it as an artist or as just kind of guy in the area. How do you sell that to your wife? How do you sell that to your partner? I didn't have to sell it, man. Yeah. You know, we just, um, you know, we don't have a lot working class, even though we're both, you know, working class actors. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. Um, her dad was a truck driver and mine ran a construction business. I'm a drywall finisher by trade and a sheet rocker, you know? So it's like, yeah, I was, I'm always looking at pops and shit. Um, I haven't had it done in a few years, thank God, but... I got. I always got my tool belt ready to go, man. You know, yeah. um, we 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 live risk. Our whole life is risk. We have not in comparison. Everyone's uh, journey, uh, especially in their own business, is very yeah. difficult because you don't know when you're going to get paid. Right. The way we get paid, if you're you're considered a working actor, if you do two gigs a year, yeah. they don't pay well anymore so that used to be the old thing so you got to work way more than two times a year yeah. so if you work four or five times a year the residual is not as great because it's streaming correct nothing is as great residuals that the upfront pay so you have it's you no know, it's more strength and volume now Interesting. Uh, there's a big facade actors put up you know just like anyone else you know it's a big facade yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all bullshit bro uh so you do what you got to do and thank god we've worked enough and plus i produce and write and everything uh, with residuals and the money we made that we can sustain, leave L.A., which we were in for a little bit, yeah. where we met each other, come back to Jersey, and even though we live a crazy existence, yeah. we can still have a normal life. Yeah. My mom and dad are here, her, yeah. her sister, this, all my yeah. boys, you know? She's from Jersey originally? 
Rhode Island, oh, which is like a small yeah, Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's why we hit it off out One there. One of the highest concentration of Italians. Oh country. my yeah, God, yeah. forget it. Yeah. It smells like bolognese when you drive yeah, to yeah, Rhode yeah, Island, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so when we talked about it, I said, look, I'm going to write this film. And I ended up writing two other movies at the same time, one after another after another. Because I made three movies back to back to back in 2022 in six oh, months. Wow. Yeah, it was Sons, then Malicious, and then St. Michael of the City. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was insane. Interesting. So, so you're going, you're really leaning into producer, director, obviously still actor, which is good. Um, so you're kind of going all in. So you had a good support system there. Yeah. I do want to, again, thank you and highlight your military service because, you know, I, um, I've interviewed, obviously, past uh, vets, and, and uh, I appreciate, obviously, their service, but I appreciate the way they approach their business, mm. and they do it differently. And I recently had an ex-CIA guy on uh, who served uh, in the Air Force prior mm. to CIA, and I just am fascinated with how they appro approach business. So give us first, you know, give us your military background, and then maybe some of the lessons you learned from there, and how you apply towards acting and being a director. Oh wow! So I joined the Army National Guard when I was still a senior in high school. I went oh to, wow! I went to Howell High. ROTC? No, but you okay. know when they got them in the hallways. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. I was lost. I was crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was like anyone else, and I was work. like, oh, I'll give it a go. That's awesome. Went home, told my mom. <laughs> now was that? Yeah, I was gonna say because like so so. Italians are like a mixed bag on military <laughs> service. You kind of either get, and Italians as a, 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 and I hate to generalize, I think Italians are more or least as patriotic as American as it can be. Mm -hmm. um, Italian Americans, I think, were like the number two ethnic group to be uh, to serve and to even be killed in World War II on the American side. I believe so. So I think there's a track record there. But then also there's some Italians that believe they're not big on military service. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, how did your parents react? How did your mom react? Anyone, any Italians that are not big or yeah. believe in military service, personally, I don't know them. Yeah. Uh, I, I, my mother, you know, not crazy about it, but my brother joined the year before me too. Oh, okay. So, so it's like, yeah. yeah. But it wasn't like we were leaving. My mother, yeah. you know, yeah. five-foot fireball, yeah. you know, just wanted to yeah. keep Kevin home, yeah. you know? Yeah. So we, we both joined. Well, so, say, not, 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 so my mother, if I if I signed, she'd be upset. Not because she's she loves this country. She was naturalized when she came over, which she could have kept her Italian citizenship, but wow. she actually naturalized. Um, so she wouldn't be upset. She passed, but she wouldn't be upset because she's not patriotic. She just wouldn't want to leave the house. <laughs> right, right. That's what it comes down <laughs> to. Yeah. Whether I served yeah. or was down in <laughs> she would be equally as pissed. You know? Right, right. So, no, I hear you, man. That. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I joined then, and we, we were both in the Tom's River Army National Guard over there. Um, did seven years. Wow. Six-year enlistment, and then I didn't know if I wanted to leave or not because my acting career was going then because yeah. I started acting, like, I think, when I was like 20, 21. And uh, that's when I said, all right, I'll re-up for one year okay. just to see yeah, if I want to yeah, stay. Yeah. I was going to get my sergeant stripes, all yeah. that stuff, and I loved it, man. Wow. I loved it, you know? We were nuts, driving tanks all over the place. I mean, wow. it was, it was Did crazy. Did you do any tours? I was in Baghdad. Whoa. I was in Baghdad in 04. So that's, when I re-upped for the one year, then my enlistment was up, but I got stopped, lost. I couldn't get out. They held me in, and I ended up going to, leaving for Baghdad like five months later after my enlistment was up. I, I heard some crazy stuff about Baghdad, and maybe you can enlighten me. So it's true when when it's crazy. when it's really when the Americans came initially to Iraq, like kind of on the borders and it's the tribals and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I get to like you're dealing with the, the military, but then there's tribes and there's other stuff. And at first it was the military were just like we give up. Right. So like Baghdad itself, as I understand, and let me go through it and correct me where I'm wrong, is Baghdad as a city kind of fell relatively quickly but once you were there, there was an insurgency and like tribes and other bad actors that came in afterwards that may have been the strategy the whole time. I don't know. If I heard something along those lines where Baghdad fell relatively easy, not easy, but relatively easy. But when it fell, it wasn't like, hey, we're there. It got attacked again by guerrilla warfare, tri tribalism, yeah. that kind Where of stuff. Where you're going with it is right. Yeah, please, if you could, you know yeah. better than me, obviously. So, so I was the second wave. So the first wave took Saddam. Okay. 
uh, that's when you saw the news and, and you had little kids waving American yeah, flags. Yeah, yeah. yeah and nobody was waving American flags when I was there, dude. I don't know what the hell happened when we got there, but it was calm for the first month, yeah. and then all of a sudden it it just went it just went. Uh, it was it was a bad dream. Sometimes if I talk about it, I go dark. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, go for, there for with me, it. yeah, yeah. But um, it was uh, it was a wild ride, and um, yeah, but the there was no insurgents then. Yeah. Then it was like militia. Okay, so yeah. our main combatant. Uh, were these guys known as the the Mahdi Army, and it was just a bunch of radicals that got together from you know whatever and wow. the band bandanas or whatever, and it was hard to identify the. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah, so we were getting into a lot, a lot of, a lot of stuff, man. Not to be long winded with it. Yeah, Lucky to be here, yeah. and um, it was just a, it was a wild ride. Towards the end of the tour, it calmed. Yeah, my boys have stayed in the military, went back repeatedly. Yeah, nothing will ever match or even come remotely close to 2004. Wow. That was that was just straight war. So on the positive side, you created a lot of camaraderie and great brotherhood, yeah, with, guys, uh, which you shouted out like so. So typical Italian guy speech, which, me which, guard, man. which which I was happy to listen to. You shouted out a lot of great men and women that you served with. Uh, you know, if you want to, if you're comfortable, share names or at least bare minimum, just kind of sharing your experience and the camaraderie that you got out of serving. Yeah. Yeah, that was something I was not expecting. Because, yeah. you know, you go to high school, you grow up, yeah. you go to high school, you got your boys, and then yeah. you join the military, and yeah. it's like this whole other section. Yeah. And then I have my actor friends, too, yeah. and, you know? So I have, like, different yeah. sections oh. of people that I'm very lucky to have in my yeah. life. And at the screening, uh, you know, randomly hit up who's texting. It was, yeah. you know, when you set up an yeah. event, it's kind of... Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah there's but they dudes, showed. Uh, there's dudes I haven't seen in, since... since uh, I like that a lot. I was actually... I was, uh, like, I was... Admittedly, tearing a little bit when you spoke. Yeah, I was. And I couldn't hold it in, man. Yeah. I, I was trying to. Yeah, and you, and you, uh. you know, and I, I think that uh, part of it was, or most of it was, the fact that guys that you served with, that you were in the, literally in the trenches with, showed up to support you in your crazy dream. Well, that's know? it. And let me tell you this too, man, because yeah. this is this is what my boys. Yeah. This is how fucking lucky I am yeah. as a dude. When I was in goddamn Baghdad. Chain smoking, nasty cigarettes because we had no food. Like, yeah. we we're trying to, I mean, in the shit of it, these guys knew I was an actor, right? And we had a good old time, you yeah. know? It was all, all boys from all over yeah. New Jersey in different areas. Yeah. And it's not like I had this career. Yeah. I was just going to acting yeah. class, right? Like, you're probably, guys, I'm an actor to, like, okay, great. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> you know, well, you know, actually, right yeah. before, I actually, okay. I got the Sopranos before that. Okay. Are you and, in the Sopranos? Yeah. What season? Uh, the tail end of the fourth, just a little okay, bit. Cool. So I was supposed to go back for the fifth season and work for be, uh, Christopher's main guy, like yeah. have a big recurring, yeah. and I got activated to go to Baghdad. I lost it. Get out of here. Yeah. So wh wh what what scene were you in, or what part were you in oh, that I can? Oh God, I was I was. It was so, it's so quick, dude. You got like it, you okay, miss got it, got and it. they cut a lot out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's this one scene where I just ran this guy down the street, Vincent the Appraiser. Oh, okay. Had his blue jumpsuit and yeah, yeah. You know all that I stuff. I gotta check that out. You're not missing anything. I'm only the appraiser. What do you think you could hide from us? Tony bought three more houses than the appraisal's victim. But uh, yeah, so these my, my buddies, man, they knew I was an actor or this and that, and and they called me Hollywood. Wow. You know, well, my intro, my nickname yeah, is yeah. Intro because yeah, yeah. my last name is so yeah, long. Yeah. But you know, every now and then, you know, they, whatever they reference this, reference that, and and. Always asking about, it, always talking about it. When I got there before the shit at the fan, I was writing a movie. I was always writing yeah, back yeah. then, so I was always involved in. It. And then, and then, and then it just got absolutely insane. And you know, you have to be that 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 soldier. So wow. that stopped. But I remember back then overseas, they were supportive. People were like, "How's this going? What what's this about? You know, good luck, good luck." And I was like, "Wow, man!" And when you have positive people like that in your life. To instill that and put that in your head, yeah. I wasn't getting carried away with it, but it was more like, fuck, man, like I appreciate yeah. it, man. I'm, you know, you you see me, yeah. you know, you see yeah. me, yeah. and and I was around people that saw me, and yeah. I saw them too, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm just a lucky dude, That's man. Lucky to admit as a man, because you're you're supposed to, you know, like the pat on the back, or yeah, you know, maybe the little extra hug was, hey, gotcha, but to be present and to be able to articulate that. 
uh, so eloquently. And and now I kind of see. So you know, when I do these interview guys, I, I kind of do them for me selfishly. Obviously, hopefully, a lot of people will watch this. But I do it because I want to learn to be a better man. I, I kind of fe- now I understand why you're in a way fearless, or at least not showing your fear per se, on like that big investment towards a film because you believe right. in yourself because they believe in you. Yeah, it, it helps. Now, if know? I self funded a movie, I would probably have a diaper on because I would die <laughs> all the time. Uh, anybody who knows me, I got a bad stomach to begin with, but. Well, I backed uh, up the belief. You know, I, <laughs> I made sure that I, I, I no stone unturned. Yeah for the knowledge of the system of how it works. Yeah. I knew Sons was gonna get completed. I knew I was gonna do right by everyone. It's not my nature to burn anybody. Correct, correct. Contract or yeah, not. Yeah. So if, I, if I give somebody $5, dude, it's on my, it's on my yeah, back until yeah. I pay him five yeah, bucks. Yeah, you know? yeah. So doing this film, the business end of it, I said, by hook or by crook, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this the right way. Yeah. The creative end of it, by hook or by crook, I'm gonna let all of that come out yeah. And nothing's gonna stop me. Yeah. And yeah, there's a fearless effort, after, especially after going through that. And I, yeah. I had cancer too in 2018, and kind of glossing that over that. What type of cancer? I had stage four uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whoa. So got through that, and then oh, after after a while, man, you just stop getting scared of shit. I mean, there's always a fear. Of, like I'm scared of things about my daughter now. Yeah, of course. When it comes to me, nah, nah, I'll run through a wall. You know, like. Such a pussy compared to you. <laughs> like, like, no. Like, I want to no. go like cry in the corner. Like I stub my toe and I bitch like I have. No, no, no. You know no. what I mean? Um, wow. That's uh, the thing though, man. Yeah, Everyone's no, got no, strengths know, in different know, areas, you know? Like I couldn't imagine going through a divorce. Yeah. That would divorce is me. rough. Divorce you know? is rough. Divorce yeah. is rough. And people are like, oh, you've been in war. I'm like, yeah, but I never had my heart broke. So yeah, I don't yeah. know. You know, like everyone's got their different well, strengths. Well, I try to, I, so I try to mellow out on people's different experiences you know typical Italians kind of judge oh, that's nothing so when something happens and the people like draw to their own wall not bad compared to me you know? yeah, yeah yeah and and i read you know i kind of followed up on this subject probably more than i want to admit and i noticed that like to my three-year-old when you you know turn off bluey or pepper pig <laughs> has the same amount of traumatic effect as yeah. maybe you know a, a divorce decree or something you know what i mean which is crazy so it's relative and experiential so i try to be cognizant of that yeah. so all right so the where is the movie so so there's a few things going on guys the first is please share where cinemas which is great because now hard to, hard to get in the cinemas nowadays yeah. with distribution give us first the cities and the timing where people can look it up. I was surprised. I didn't think we would get that kind of release because Vertical Entertainment took it. Well, and um, the yeah, thanks. They're one of the biggest in the business. So they snatched us up. I was like, holy shit, we did it, man. We did it. And, and what, what happens to that? So kind of like they they check you out. They put it in the theaters. And if it does well, it expands. Or do you go online or a little bit of both? Or? I don't want to. It's a long-winded conversation. Got it, got it. We'll uh, save it for part two. Yeah, I'll say for part two, but just know that if, if a distributor puts you up for any kind of theatrical release, you know, we're not a star-driven movie, Yeah. but if any kind of theatrical yeah. release, it puts you on a level. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So no, yeah. 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 Yeah, true. So it's going to be in um, Chicago, Dallas, Detroit, Minneapolis, and Brooklyn. Sweet. On January 5th. Where in Brooklyn? The Kent Theater. It's a pretty well Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then at the same the same day they call it day and date it's on Amazon January 5th, so launch commonly so we can watch on Amazon mm-hmm. we can watch on obviously in those the cities I thought I want to say on the uh, Instagram page Apple iTunes or something oh yeah yeah you know we don't talk about it too much no. it's there but I'd rather I'd rather all the traffic you want to push it yeah yeah so you want to yeah. yeah, yeah. Rather than split it up and this and that, because it's gonna be on a bunch. But that's that's. Well, the, the SEO guy, I'll tell you the same thing. I, I deal with people that are artists, and I, I I don't do as much of that in marketing as as um as maybe I'd like. It's fun, but it's also very volatile, as you know. Um, so I believe in going inch wide, mile deep. Like, hey, let's all go in on Amazon. Obviously, if you go to the movie theater, look it up. I'm gonna put the links below. What links I can share when we launch. But I want to drive everybody towards Amazon. I'm trying to convince them to do a watch party, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we'll um, talk about which that. what happens is you do uh, kind of a link to the watch party. People do have to buy this the movie, right. and then they can watch. We all watch at the same time. Let's say you're mo- I'm a moderator, you're a moderator. Mm-hmm. We we can chat with everybody who's watching in real time. They can ask you questions in real time, and it's just a simple chat bot 
that's next to it. And it's pretty dope. Ooh. So imagine like watching a movie. Well, they can you can watch a movie and have, ask questions as you kind of go along. Yeah. And Kevin can in real time. I don't answer, know what so answer them. Fun. Well, that's true. That's, <laughs> another, that's a whole nother. Dis- no, oh, but or, maybe, or maybe you can block them. Now. Um, That'd but, be fun. I, but, I appreciate anybody seeing it. I, you know, I made this movie. I'm a Jersey boy, dude. Yeah. You know, and I, I was here, moved to L.A., came back and business got better for me. And I said, uh, you know, I want to make a film where my my people appreciate. Yeah. It. Someone's in Oklahoma sees it, and like, ah, I got I yeah. two shits. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Cool if they watch it, but if people in my home state connect. But I I think if you so, so it's interesting because I I've done like kind of real mob stuff, then I've done movie mob stuff. I don't I don't I don't do it. I'm gonna probably do more actors soon, and probably do more directors because I want to. Let me know. I got friends. Yeah, please, because I I um. A lot of headaches dealing with the real stuff. <laughs> I, like, I have honest. friends. I have yeah. friends, Tom. Yeah, I was gonna say. I got so. friends, guys. I have friends. I know some people. <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> Not like people say. <laughs> so okay, so you got to show the tattoo. Now here's the thing: if you show this tattoo prior to the interview, I would I wouldn't have interviewed him. Just kidding. But you got to show the uh, what is it? Tinkata? What is it called? Oh, the yeah. Chukria. Yeah. So there you you go. see that on camera? No, nah, I, 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 it's five cameras here. Nah, so, yeah, so yeah. man, he, whatever one picks it up. I got that in Sicily, up. actually. Really? By a dude who had a bleach blonde beard, wow. bright, bright blue eyes, looked like a Viking, and he was full-blooded, f- third-generation Sicilian. Get out of here. That's like rare. Right in Palermo, man. Yeah. In Pal- well, wow. Yeah. And How beautiful Sicilian. Palermo. And it's I can't wait to go back. Yes, Palermo. Where have you been in Sicily other than Palermo? Palermo, by the way, beautiful city. Shout Just out stayed to in that area. We had a big trip one time, my oh, wife, and um, awesome. we we're going back as soon as possible, man, to really explore and see where my grandma. My you know grandma, the town they're from, or? Yeah, oh my God, my grandmother. Yeah, my grandmother's from Musomeli. Okay, in the, okay. In the province there, and my father's. I can't. My grandfather's. I can't think of offhand. But my yeah. um, you ever do? 23 and me or what ancestry I, I did it so what happened was my brother and sister did it so i'm like if they did it i don't think i need to do it you do uh you do i'll be worried if yeah, it happens, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i i did it and i know my roots are yeah. sicily i didn't know just how strong they kept wow. that right down to my mom and dad so i i got the results back you got to spit in this little tube yeah, shake, yeah, shake yeah, it yeah. send it in so i got the results back and it says on this it's an email and it's very elaborate. And it says in his email, uh, anyone that present day is born, raised, and died in Sicily, uh, it's on average of, you'll see like 74% or oh, something wow. like that. Mine was 94. Oh, uh, uh, I'm like, talk Sicilian about pure indigenous? blood, brother. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say. I mean, no wonder why I'm making movies Cause like you got, this. Because you got like, you got the Moors, you got the Vikings, uh, North Africans. I mean, you had really like a lot of different uh, Romans, obviously. Yeah. Um, so it'd be 94%. That, that kept it pretty tight. But it's it's a melting pot, you know? And it, it was nice to see, too. But going from, I don't know if you can attest to this, from Northern Italy down, yeah. very thin, yeah. frail. Yeah. And yeah. as you yeah. go yeah. down, yeah. 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 once you get the lower, yeah. lower yeah. Italy and then yeah. Sicily, yeah. it's like, yeah. oh, that looks like my grandma. Yeah. The yeah. big leg, the cankles, yeah. you yeah. know? And I was like, look, but the, the young guys people are fat, though, which is weird. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, like you yeah. figure, like, so, so one, there's no GMOs, you know that. Yeah. Uh, when I go to Italy, and it's been years, I'm going to go back soon. But when I go to Italy, and I always have GI distress, but my stomach bothers me when I go there because their food is clean. Wow. Cause it's as clean as my body. Yeah. So like, what the hell's going on here? Um, and, 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 and the older people, you know, the Italian grandmother's here and the Italian grandmother's there. That's, I think, a generational thing. And they're older, but like the young people are thin. Yeah. Oh, it's wow. crazy. You know, you touched space on something before, yeah. and I don't want to backtrack. And I know no, we're please, time, this is your show. But you said, uh, <laughs> "Hey, this is my show, yeah, the New exactly. Theory Podcast." The Kevin, Kevin did the show. And today we have Tom Levesque, aka the ninety-four percent is saying. What will happen is I'll probably get voted off my own show, <laughs> yeah. and then I have the channel head over, head over the channel. Oh here. man! You know, I was talking to my my grandpa years ago when he was alive. My pop, and he was a World War II vet. Mm. Uh, my 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 entire family's North Jersey. Yeah. We some of us. Moved yeah, down. where did they when they they came over from Italy? Where, you know where they first landed? Oh, they were all Passaic Elmwood Park. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that, a lot of Sicilians. Uh, Patterson had their you yeah know, huge little Italy and yeah crazy. They had pizza know. shops and yeah. everything. And my father was like Garfield, Lodi. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, my roots are always up here. God bless. Um, and I grew up in Howell. 
Yeah, yeah. Moved to LA and then I came back to North Jersey. Yeah, how was it being? I, I finish your thing. I, and, I like yeah. North Jersey better. Got it. I actually. Yeah. Did, yeah. So how was it being like? So I, I kind of. So it's funny because when you go to LA or go to other places, you're like the Jersey guy there or the New Yorker, and then like the people that are there. I think over time they change. It was rough, dude. You kind of yeah, shed yeah. your East Coast, and then you like you go visit your friend out there, and they want to go for like quinoa, like a quinoa bowl, and yeah. Like, Get a, like a latte, and I'm like, "What yeah. happened to you?" Like, yeah. but that didn't seem to happen to you. So, so give me your LA experience. Well, I, I did not change. <laughs> <laughs> there was no way, by hook or by crook, I was going to uh, give in. I was actually, um, I was a hermit. Yeah. Uh, I went out there. I left my family. Yeah. I left my friends. Yeah, I left the family yeah. business, man. I left my life. I did. I, you know, I grew up. <laughs> Working with my dad and to leave my dad and my brother. You like answers. I don't know if it's the actor in you, the maybe the Italian American, because we're you answer like a simple question and I just want to cry. Like I left my <laughs> I, I, like he went to like LA for like four years and he made it look like he was like had like the stick and the bag. <laughs> Stevie Walker was the stage yeah, with the, with the little crying. bag, oh the God. red bag on the stick. Oh my God! I'm gonna need some, uh, I'm gonna need some <laughs> tissues, please. Oh jeez. So anyway, so you left everything. Well, I did, did, you know, yeah. and I I sold my my I had a '72 Buick Skylark, my daily That's car. My, I mean, what did I, you have hanging from the mirror? Uh, I had boxing gloves. I used to throw. So um, I to to do that at 30 years old. Yeah. I was already set. Yeah, yeah. But I was lost. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. have it. I, there was nothing around me. There yeah, was no yeah. tax credit. Yeah, there was no production. Yeah, yeah. So I could have went to New York. Yeah. But I just didn't like New York. I, I just, no, but if you're like, gonna, you, if you're gonna you know, act, I was like, I gotta go. Time. Yeah. See, the thing I like about okay, so this really quick, the streaming thing. Um, uh, um, jammed everybody up and I, I will say that but one of the serendipitous benefits of it is there's such a hunger for content meaning you're a yeah. Hulu you're a Netflix I gotta tell you my Netflix story in a second okay. you're you're one of these big even Amazon uh, studios you just need you just need content content like a, a, you know, that so word it's like, so it's like wait a second like we need content where's our tax credit we're gonna get a group of guys so I think one of the benefits of they have now opening up Amazon Amazon Studios I think no Netflix Studios is opening in Jersey. Um, we miles. obviously have the tea, Silver Cup is a teacup. Lionsgate here. Silver Cup Lionsgate. Sinalese so like here. I think that's serendipitous of the streaming because that greater need for content yeah. is creating greater bases. But anyway, sorry. So tell us about LA again. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but but you're right. You know, and content. I, I embrace the other side of the business uh, from the artistic side. And that is a, it's a crushing word. Yeah. And to see how movies are actually sold overseas. Like yeah. I'm in the, I was with buyers and sellers and I, I learned that. That was my experience in LA. I continued as an actor, things started, kept going, yeah. okay. But I said, by hook or by crook, if I'm leaving my entire life, I every make, single I friend it, I, I got, make it worth it. I'm gonna run through fucking walls here. Yeah. And that's what I did, man. And um, I did not make, I made friends from the business. Yeah. I'm very lucky about that. I made zero new friends in seven years. Yeah. I didn't party. I didn't drink. I didn't go out. I didn't care about girls. You, you, you were, you were, what do they call that? Uh, it's mission, uh, per what's the name for it? Uh, like when you just, you're there for the mission, that's all it is. And yeah. That's, and so yeah like, I missions was, are mission driven. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty singular focused. Knock on wood, I, I met my wife and I was great. Thank God, you know? Um, but other than that, man, I was just, I was, I was just an animal. Absolutely, I didn't fit in LA. I yeah. didn't fit at all. I I, uh, I got to tell you a quick, funny Netflix story. So, when I was the podcast was on audio. If you go way back on the audio, it's there. So, a friend of mine wrote a treatment, um, and it was a pretty dope treatment. It was kind of around, kind of like Many Saints in Newark, and but it focused on like the black gangsters at the time. Okay. That kind of like when the Italians left Newark kind of the black kind uh -huh. of crews took over and he has like a like a whole he sort of not like it's weird he actually wrote and probably the opposite of what he should did should have done was he wrote the actual script and i and the little that i know i'm like it's not the old days you walk in with a script and they take it but i said can you write a treatment up and then if you have the script you have it available because you shouldn't write a whole script right or you could could you could it's not work right yeah <laughs> well, maybe chat gpt and nowadays shit. yeah forget uh, it, yeah. uh so we gotta actually we have that's AI. scary man. i have some ai questions about that so 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 what happened was um he had a hard time getting it picked up i helped him submit it to amazon studios a normal route 
So I came up with this idea because I own the UPS store. God, I don't know if I should say this, but <laughs> so I, and this is legitimate. So like I was, I, I, we identify the top six executives at Netflix, New York. So when we identified them, we got UPS envelopes mm -hmm. and put the treatment in, in the, in the letter mm -hmm. and literally like put the top six there. And then the return address was from Netflix LA <laughs> and each one I wrote scribble on it. Like, Oh, uh, George, check this out. Uh, let me know. Give him a call. No. And I, we, so we did these six envelopes at a top six, <laughs> but one better was I, I, I go to my sister. She runs a store and I'm wearing the UPS store hat, not UPS. Cause I'll get in trouble for that. But I was delivering on behalf of the store cause yeah. he did pay me a dollar to deliver. Um, I wore the UPS store hat. I wore the UPS store shirt. Yeah. And when I got there, I just was expected to drop him off. The guy goes, go upstairs. Because he thought it was UPS. But it was UPS store. And I actually hand-delivered the six pieces to the six assistants. you got to be kidding To me. each of the persons at Netflix. Didn't get, didn't get a call. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get a call. Dude. No call. But you still made them think about it, I man. I got as close as it gets. One of the guys I wow. shook hands with, I'm like, he's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, hey, uh. I get like a, a, a ADM. Like we put in like the special super ADM delivery, blah blah. And I'm playing the role. I'm like, oh, I was supposed to be here by eight. It's at two. Sorry. He goes, oh, thank you. And I, oh, what's your name, Tom? Hey, thank you. Like left. So like, what? Like, the guy was like on the C suite of like the New York side. So you know, I guess what you gotta get trip. creative when it comes to marketing and doing that's the, that's the hustler in you, man. So that's the so before we wrap up, like, so we got to talk about AI, like. Okay, so like I don't know if I have answers for you. Well, man. like if, to me too. If, if I have enough, if I take your two or three scripts, yeah, and I dump in the Chat GPT and I say I want you to create a movie about a mermaid that falls in love with a sailor in Kevin's voice, a Sicilian sailor, a Sicilian sailor who, who blonde hair, blue <laughs> eyes, who gets pretty damn close to what you wrote, and it's fucking scary. Wow. Have you messed around with ChatGPT and AI it's yet? It's funny you're bringing it up because two nights ago I was with a buddy of mine who was messing around with it and he told me what the capabilities are and it's it's pretty daunting. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty scary, man. We should maybe do a show where like you're going to write just a short treatment about something. Yeah. And I'm going to write a short treatment to ChatGPT as you and then we'll see how close it gets. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> well, so, so you know Gary Vaynerchuk, Jersey guy, right? I do. Okay, yeah, where's his, he from? Uh, uh, down the street. He's from Edison. Wow. And Wine Library, you can you can throw a stone and hit it. Cool. I met him there. Uh, quick uh, shout out to Gary. So when I first started the podcast, go years ago. Uh, first, my, my 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 girlfriend at the time, but now my wife. Um, we got up on a Saturday. He's at Wine Library signing books all day. I'm like, hey babe, can you videotape this for me? And she's like, I have no interest in going. I'm like, well, it's Gary V. I'm like, can you film? She's like, I'm tired. I don't feel like going. I have no interest in going. I'm like, it's Gary V. And it's like, he's still big, but he's really big at the time. Yeah. And um, he, he was doing, um, I think he launches wine. Mm -hmm. And I was doing a podcast and technically media. He was like, when I got there, he, I cut the line, sat down. He's like, hey, Tom. He was like apologizing to me for making me wait mm -hmm. because he was like taking extra time with people. I'm like, I'll fucking wait all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I only have the audio of it because my wife's going to come. Um, so, so I interviewed him and a great podcast. I should probably put that back up, uh, put the audio up. So my point being is I learned a lot from him being a Jersey guy, kind of navigating social, navigating YouTube. Um, so yeah, so wine library is right down the street. And then a the second time he launched a book, I went to like Barnes and Noble, I scooped up like 10 books. Yeah. And again, D rock was like, I'm his guy, cut the line, let, signed everything, took a photo. Like literally it was like 300 people. So. So I, the thing I like about him is like he, he kind of morphed a little bit. He's now the New York guy. He hasn't been in Edison probably in years yeah. unless he went to go visit his parents. But I learned a lot by like following him. But anyway, what he's saying is, and this I think gives guys like you hope, but meaning the creatives. Yeah. He goes, all ChatGPT is doing is pushing up the onus on the creative and the execution is being done. Yeah. Kind of akin to the tractor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think for guys like you, if you adopt AI correctly and you're spot on because you have the creative, it's not as scary as it sounds. Eventually it will be. If it's going to, like a, a, a bot just, um, I think, beat up somebody at Tesla. 
<laughs> like, 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 don't you, can't you program don't beat me up? Like, I don't know. <laughs> he beat him up. I think, like, like oh, you're staring at my like yeah. toaster. That's mine, you know? Oh, so, man. um, so, um, uh, so what, anyway, what Gary Vee was saying is it's pushing up to creative. So it's really kind of up to the creative suite. Yeah. And then the writing, which I know is a passion is the That's, tractor. Right, right, right. Now, now like, you may disagree, but where do you land on that? I enjoy writing. You know, I look at it like, uh, you know, some people buy art from artists, yeah. Etsy or whatever. Yeah. And then some people Hold are on. cool. I'm going to write your next script real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some people write art buy art from artists and then some people are okay buying art um for their walls if it's on target at, at target you know what i mean yep. you can't you know you can't suit everybody like making this film i don't know who's gonna like it who's not gonna like it i have no idea i just gotta do my thing and throw it out there so chapter are we GPT. writing a movie treatment yeah not a series do a movie treatment Movie treatment? Are you on a, a AI website right now? I'm on an app. I don't even know how to do that. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna write write a 300 word movie treatment for a gangster film. Ooh, blind. <laughs> now this, blind, blind, blind. Okay, so like, now, I don't, now I don't know. What does it do? This is how far removed from technology I am, man. So he has asked me a few questions. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. You ready? Yeah. Is it's it still going? Holy shit. It's still going. The guy's name is Vinny. I shit you not. This is a character. Of, okay. So, title is Garden State Challenge. I'm gonna, by the way, I'm trademarking this. <laughs> Dude. I, I, I got to ship this. Are we going to go to New York or something? But this is an art. We're going to print it up and mail it to New York or something. So, okay. Garden State Shadows. The gritty underworld in New Jersey, a blonde, one-eyed gangster, rises to power, navigating treacherous alliances, family conflicts, and his own personal demons in the gripping title of crime, loyalty, and redemption. Treatment, Act One. Stop. The Brit. Oh my God. The protagonist is Vincent Russo. Wow. Act Two. The unlikely alliance with Maria, a fiercely independent, street smart woman. Becomes his confidant. I'm, I'm, I'm sending this into Netflix. Act three, his pursuit of power gets closed in the arc. Pursuit of power leads to clim climatic showdown with Don DeLuca, <laughs> where he must confront his own demons and make a fearful decision. And then the epilogue. This is fucking scary. That's wild. I mean, the I'll time. Make you a deal. I'll make a deal. I'll send this to you because it might mean, mean more coming from you. And just give me the like 20%. <laughs> yeah, right. But on the back end too, don't scrape. Oh, no, no. Find no. Fee, success fee. Because I know how these Hollywood types operate. <laughs> yeah, right. How crazy is that? That that's crazy. We right? just wrote a treatment. That's crazy. And it's actually not bad. A little stereotypical, but that's what it is. I think there's a level. So does that scare you? Or does that excite you? Or both? It scares me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't get scared, scared, but it. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, <laughs> I'm not I was, shaking in my he was like, he was like, <laughs> he was like, he was like, I was in war. I battle cancer. I just put up my house for a movie. Does a fucking chatbot scare you? And I start shaking in my pants you over cannot, a AI. <laughs> you cannot make this shit up. Oh man, you gotta love these in studio interviews. But uh, it, it, it's, it's a good. Time. I think, I for me, I I think. It's an unstoppable beast, yeah. and it's like somehow or another I have to familiarize myself with it and yeah. see how I can benefit from it because there's other people that are going to be doing that too. You know? That's crazy. Yeah, it is. All right, Kevin, this was a good one. Exactly. I want. I don't want to do this in two parts um, because um, um, YouTube kills on the average watch time. So I think at this point, if you made it this far, drop a note below and and and, and put what you want a treatment written about. I'll chat GPT it to you, yeah. and then I'll do another episode on that. So, Kevin, how can we find you, and how can we find the the movie? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, my name, or at the Kevin Intro. That's really where I go to say what's up, by all means. Thanks for watching. And the movie will be on Amazon. I'll go there to check it out. So, we'll put links to the Amazon, just in case, for whatever reason, if you can't, if I, I don't put the link, or you want, we're going to have an audio portion as well. Um, and you know, eventually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have an avatar of me. Okay. And the ChatGPT is gonna conduct, <laughs> conduct the interview. <laughs> but I, but I don't know how to do. I don't know. It'll probably be like a. Um, 
it'll be a uh, probably like a, sc- a screen at first. Yeah, so yeah. Like talking like a screen. Yeah, that'd be but good. But like, it's not like me in the background. The AI will ask you those questions. Oh. Now I don't know how adaptive it'll be real time to kind of pivot. That, yeah. that might have to be seen. Yeah, and yeah. And eventually I'll have like, and I'll probably make them a little better looking because which is not hard to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, listen, this is a wrap, and uh, thank you so much for watching New Theory Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, and again, if you made it this far along, drop your link below. Uh, uh, let me know if you're going to watch the Bastard Son and Number t- uh, Sons, Bastard Son, the Bastard Sons, that's the Bastard yeah. Son, two S's. Yep, the Bastard, Bastard Sons. Sons, and then also let us know uh, what do you want us to chat GPT, and then maybe we'll break into uh, Netflix again, man. Maybe. Thank you so much, Kevin. Pleasure was mine, man. Thank All you. Right. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank